Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, I am Pac-Man King. That's not my name. But uh, I'm back again to talk about the Tennessee Titans and some of the free agents they should go after and who I think are the best ones that they should get. Now, so far I have done a couple. I've done wide receiver. I've done cornerback. Now I am on to the safeties. So safety looks to be pretty decent this year in terms of free agents. There, there's a good there's a good amount of some guys that you could probably get some decent production with if they were to come to your team. Um, but I got about five. It was kind of hard to do a top five because there was like maybe six or seven that I was like, okay, this person could be fifth. This person could be in there. Oh, wait, there's this guy. But then I think I came down with a pretty decent list that I like. Uh, I got some honorable mentions, though. First off is more of a pipe dream. This is more of a pipe thing. Pipe dream type thing. Um, that's if, if it happens. I heard that I heard that it could happen. I don't know if it will, but I know that the I know that they ain't got a lot of money, so I can easily see it happening. But that's it. That is bringing back Kevin Byer. That's my first honorable mention. Is bringing back KB. Um, I heard the Eagles might cut him because he he's making bank. He's he's making a lot of money, and I know the Eagles ain't got no cap space. So um, I can see it. I can see it happening. If they really need to, I know he. I know he wasn't great. He wasn't great with us or with them, to be honest. He actually he wasn't great with us, and then he got worse when he went to them. So, I mean, if we could bring him back on like a one year cheap deal, I'd be okay with it. And like use next year, and like next year when we have a, some extra draft picks, we could use one of those on like one of the earlier ones on a safety, and then we could go from there, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I that's more of a that's more of a bringing back the past type thing, and it's it's not that serious of a pick. That's why it's an honorable mention. But I would I, I want KB back, man. I would love to have KB back. But all right, getting into the list now. My fifth spot. I kind of went back and forth with this one. I was thinking at first I was like. Uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson could be the fifth one. Then I was like, oh, Darnell Savage, maybe. But I was like, ah, no. Chauncey Gardner Johnson was hurt most of the year. Darnell Savage has not been as productive as years past. I don't think so. I don't know about that one. Um, but I landed on Cameron Curl. I think that Cameron Curl is a pretty good, a pretty daggum good safety, and him being fifth on the list is partially how is a testament to how deep this safety group is for this year in free agency. Like he's fifth, and honestly, I think he's he could be probably one of the top three safeties in this free agent group, but it's kind of deep. So I'm right now I'm going to put him at fifth. Uh, he'd be a good. I think he'd be a good compliment to Amani Hooker. We need somebody because last year, I mean, Elijah Molden. Is, like I was saying there the whole. I was saying the whole time. I'm like, this dude is not a safety. Okay, he's not a safety. He's a corner. All right. He's really not a safety. They're trying to turn like they. They're trying to make him versatile, but he's just not good. He was just not good. So they made, they basically made him a, a slot corner safety hybrid, basically. And then when we got Terrell Edmonds, uh, I think he mostly went back to being a slot corner. So, uh, and then we had that other guy. I forgot. I forgot who it was. Kevon Wallace. Yeah, he started playing better. He started playing well, so he started getting safety snaps. But none of these dudes should play safety for us. That should be our starting safety next year. Wallace, I would like to see him back as a depth guy, but neither, none of them should be our starting safeties next year. Uh, Cameron Curl would be good. I'd like I like him. 
Um, he can be pretty productive at times. I don't know how productive he was this past year. I think he was decent, but I don't really remember. I, ch I just checked, and I forgot already. Uh, now, number four, I got Kyle Duggar. Um, the thing with Kyle Duggar is he's a tackling machine. Like, he's a tackling machine. The issue is he's a tackling machine. Can't cover at least not at least not consistently. Uh, he's not great in coverage, and honestly, it, but he would be a good fit for us because he would be our box. He would be a box safety. He had over a hundred tackles last year, a couple of interceptions, but he would he would be our box safety. He'd be our strong safety. Amani Hooker would would be playing our deep safety, which he's at his best when he's playing deep safety, and. Duggar would be our box safety, and that would help our run game tremendously, in my opinion. Our run defense. We had a pretty we had a decent run defense last year, but then there were games where we were just giving up a bunch of yards. Like that game against Zach Moss pissed me off against the Colts last year. I'm like, Zach Moss is not that good. Matter of fact, he's not really good at all. His only 100-yard game of the season was his only maybe, but his last 100-yard game of the season was that game that he had against us back in Week Five. Week Five, he didn't have another game where he crossed 100 yards or even got close to 100 yards after that game. I I was pissed because I'm like, this is not this is not the Tennessee Titan defense that I was expecting. Like, I know we're not. Our defense is built on not having good coverage, okay? And not getting a huge amount of sacks. That's what our defense was built was supposed to be built on. But we are always supposed to have a good run defense. When we now have a good run defense, I feel like the whole team is bad. But I mean Kyle but Kyle Duggar could help that a lot. He could basically be a hybrid linebacker. He could be a hybrid linebacker for us too. Just in case we don't have good linebackers, because I don't know what we're doing at linebacker, and I will get on to that next week, because that's going to be the next position I do. Who the heck are we going to get for our inside linebackers? Are we going to bring back out here? But we'll see. Um, So that's four, Kyle Duggar four. Number three, Xavier McKinney from the New Yorkian Giants. To be honest, if you're a giant... If, if you're anyone who was a giant, you, you'd want to get out of there. Like, I don't know why you would want to stay in New York if you were a free agent this year and, if, and you're a giant. Like, Saquon, he out of there. Um, or Dory Jackson, he probably out of there. Xavier McKinney, he could be out of there and he could be headed to us. Which I honestly want Xavier McKinney. I, I think Xavier McKinney is actually really good. He's probably their only consistently good defense, defensive back in New York. He's probably the only one. So, um, Xavier McKinney, I think he, I think we have the best chance of getting Xavier McKinney. I think that he's probably the highest chance we got. He's not going to be very cheap. None of these safeties are going to be very cheap, now that I think about it. These top five safeties, they're all going to be pretty expensive. Like, we're probably going to have to pay over $10 million for every single safety, or over $10 million a year for every single safety that I'm naming right now. Like, um, Curl will probably get around eight, nine, ten million a year, wherever he goes, because he's gonna get overpaid. He's probably gonna get overpaid by somebody who really needs a safety. Um, Duggar might also get that same thing, and then there's McKinney, who's also been good, who's also been pretty good, and I would like to have him on my team. So. Then there's number two. That is Geno Stone from b -more. He's got a connection with our current new D coordinator, um, Denaro Wilson. He was the DB coach in Baltimore. So you can see Geno Stone. Geno Stone has a connection there. So, and he had like, Geno Stone went off last year. He had like seven picks or something like that. I know he had a lot of, I know he had a lot of interceptions. And, man. We need guys who can make plays. That's we need to we need DBs who can make plays. We haven't had like Kevin Byard is really the only guy. 
as far as a consistent defensive back who can get interceptions, who can create turnovers. He's the only one we've had in the past oof, decade. Past decade. I don't remember the last corner we've had that had more than three that had more than two interceptions. Three interceptions. That had more than three interceptions. Malcolm Butler. Yeah, no way, yeah. It was Malcolm Butler. In 2020, he had five interceptions. And then we immediately cut him the year after that. Which I'm back on that again. I still think that was stupid. But, um, yeah. That's where we were. Um, Geno Stone would be a great addition. He's pretty, he's all around. He can do a lot of stuff um, all over the field for us. And he would be a great addition. And he would also be an expensive addition. Because they're all going to cost so much freaking money. Um, and then last but not least, but also the least likely to probably sign with us because he's probably going to get re-signed. Antoine Winfield Jr. He's going, he's going to break the bank in the safety market. He's going to break the safety market bank. He's probably going to be the first safety to make 20 mil a year. If he hits, if the Bucks let him hit free agency and he doesn't get franchise tag, he's probably going to be the first safety that makes 20 mil a year. He's that good. Simple as that. He's that good. Um, but if he were to come to us, I mean, I, I take him. You know what I'm saying? But he'd cost, but shelling out $20 million for a safety is due. I know we got like $80 million in cap space, but $20 million of it going to a safety? I don't know about that. That's a little tough. That's a little tough. But I mean, obviously he's instant. He's instant impact. I mean, he would be he he's Kevin. He would be Kevin Byer, twenty seventeen. Like twenty seventeen Byer, that dude that dude was unstoppable. Like he was elite. Um, so that's gonna be, that's pretty much gonna about do it. I think the say I think this safety I think this safety group is pretty deep, and they're gonna be pretty expensive no matter who we try to get. The one I want the most is Xavier McKinney because I feel like he's a good, he's a borderline top 10 safety at a decent price, I think, that we could get. And then I'd also be okay with Duggar, kind of. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of be okay with Duggar. I'd be okay with any of the five. That's why I put the five out there. But I really want Xavier McKinney the most because I think at, at, at his position, and the money, I think that would be great for us. Because we're not trying to make the bank. We're, we're, they, I've said, or they said that they're not, they're not going to be trying to break the bank for a lot of these players. So they're going to try, they're going to shell out, they're going to, they're going to shell out some money for a couple of players though. I just don't know at what positions. I'm assuming that, I'm assuming that O-line, that O-line is going to be one of those positions. But, you know, we'll see where they go from there. Free agency starts. March 11th, I think I heard. Yeah, I think it's March 11th. So we're gonna see what pop off. We're probably within that first week of Mar within that week of March 11th. We're gonna find out where some players are going, and it's starting to cook up now. Uh, next week, I might I might go a little longer. I might do more than just linebacker. I might do linebacker and then go back on offense and look at running backs. Because I think we're probably going to get a running back in free agency. I, the thing is, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many great running backs that are hitting free agency. And all of them are going to be expensive. So it's like, do you really want to pay for that? Do you really want to pay for a Saquon Barkley, a Josh Jacobs, a Derrick Henry? Uh, who the fuck else is out there? There's so many good ones. Those are the big three, though. Saquon, Josh Jacobs, and oh, there's also Tony Pollard. Like, even though he, he 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 ain't really up there, but this free agency free agency is getting close, man. The combine also, the combine also starts in a couple of days, actually. So that's going to be exciting for me. Um, I know that Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors are not going to be doing the stuff at the combine, which I mean, I'm a little. 
I'm a little upset because you know me. I I need to know what y'all. I need to know what you're running, my guy. Like, what do you? What's your speed, my man? What you What you doing in that four? Like, just run the. You could just run the forty at least, right? You don't have to do the on field stuff, but the forty though, right? That's what I come here for is to see the forties. That's what everyone comes to the. They only want to see the forties. They don't care about the on field stuff. They just want to see the forty yard dashes. But um, that's it for me. I'm going to pop out, and I'll see you all next time. Deuces. We appreciate all the supporters. Most importantly, we appreciate the haters.